Warriors, it's time to stop saving your pennies. It's time to stop saving your money. It's time to take that coin jar and bust it, Warriors. I'm Coach JB, the top health and mindset coach in the world. I'm a warrior coach. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind, will eventually become your words and become your reality. It's time to stop saving your money, Warriors. This is completely unorthodox and what you've learned for the past 20 years or even beyond words. I'm 44 years old and I'm going to tell you, stop saving your money. Let's jump right into it, Warriors. So I'm a warrior coach. I teach people how to open up their mind and the awareness of the possibilities for a human being. As I always tell you, don't believe a word I say. Challenge everything I say. I'm trying to teach you how to fish, Warriors. I'm not handing you the fish. I'm teaching you how to fish. And here's the thing. Humans have a tension span of five seconds. Most of you are not going to make it six minutes into this video. You're not. Because they have you so manipulated looking this way at a, at a pandemic. You're switching things so quickly as the richest people in the world are becoming much wealthier. They are not saving their cash warriors. They're investing in stores of value. So I'm going to break down the deflation of your dollar. And I'm going to show you one of the biggest hedges against inflation. And I'm going to show you what some of the top investors are saying in the world. Now, some of these top investors aren't invested in the, in the digital space or cryptocurrency. They're divest. You're going to see what I'm talking about. But I'll tell you what, Warriors, richest people in the world are not saving their money. They're moving their money into assets, hard assets. So let's get right into it, Warriors. So stop saving your pennies. Stop listening to Susie down the street telling you that cryptocurrency is a fraud. And that you need to save your pennies because your pennies are deflating. So let's take a look at this. So this is the rise and fall of the dollar since 1913 to 2019. This doesn't even depict 2020, which I'm going to dive into a little bit deeper. And I'm going to show you one of the asset classes that most billionaires right now are rushing into. Specifically people like Michael Saylor of MicroStrategies. Do you understand who MicroStrategies is? Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation warriors. So the rise and fall of the dollar. So let's go back to 1913 when the Federal Reserve was created. Now the Federal Reserve is the richest people in the world that created the Federal Reserve to protect the central banks from collapsing. Okay, warriors. So the Federal Reserve is a separate entity or was a separate entity from the government. It's now under the Treasury. President Trump put it under the Treasury. But the Federal Reserve was not part of the government warriors. It is a federal, it's called the Federal Reserve, and it basically is to protect the central banks from collapsing. Okay, so 1913, the Federal Reserve was created. Okay, so you got 1923, there was a Wall Street crash. Do you guys remember the, the Great Depression, right? The biggest, one of the biggest crashes in history was the, I think it was called the Black Tuesday. It's right here, the Black Tuesday, the stock market crash, okay? Then they went through the Great Depression, which is your grandparents went through, your grandparents' parents went through. And that's where a lot of the subconscious mind programming comes from that you're dealing with right now. The subconscious mind programming you're dealing with right now, eat everything on your plate, save your pennies. That is over, Warriors. I'm going to explain how you can't live in the same subconscious mind programming as your parents or your grandparents or you're going to get crushed by the economy. Okay, so here's when the stock market crash happens. Then the Bretton Woods Agreement. What was the Bretton Woods Agreement? The Bretton Woods Agreement, you're going to hear within the cryptocurrency space, we need to go back to a Bretton Woods type standard, right, in a digital currency type of way. That was specifically quoted by Judy Shelton. We need to go back to a Bretton Woods standard or a gold standard in a cryptocurrency type of way. Now, Bretton Woods was when they detached gold. So gold was uh, backed by the U.S. dollar. Okay, so the gold is backed by the U.S. dollars. It was an agreement to basically hedge that deflation, right? Okay, so then we get to about 1971. They don't have it in here, but in 1971, there was two things massive that happened. In January 1971, the World Economic Forum was created by Klaus, okay? Now, you got to understand who Klaus Schwab is. He's a big player in the game. He's connected to the elites. Watch a YouTube video I did yesterday. I'll actually link it up here. Watch a YouTube video I did yesterday around Klaus. He's a huge player. So in 1971, in my paradigm, I believe that's when all this started. They were getting us ready in 1971 for the new asset class that we're dealing with now. 
which is where most of the people are moving into. People should not be saving their money right now. Okay, So then you go into 1973, we had the oil crisis. Now you notice with every single crisis, what happens? The dollar deflates. Now here's something you need to know. That every single fiat currency, every single government issue currency in history has collapsed. Every single one, Warriors. Every single fiat currency or government issue currency has collapsed. Okay, so you had the oil crisis around 19, uh, 19, after 1973. And we had our second oil crisis. Now remember, the petrol, the oil is traded and uh, was attached to the petrol, right? So uh, our dollar, everything, all the oil that's traded uh, from the Saudis is attached to the dollar, okay? Now I think that's been separated so that or they're working on that right now. So you had the oil crisis in 1970, around 1974, second oil crisis in 19, right before 1983. We had the dot-com bubble. Do you notice something, Warriors? After every single bubble or every single crash, what happened around this time too, September 11th, okay, after every single crash, our dollar continues to deflate, okay? Then we had Lehman Brothers collapse, collapse. What happened in 2008? 2008. Now, let me ask you a question, Wars. Well, let's back up really quickly. In 1996, MIT was working on, let me show you guys, it's right here. Boom, in 1996, MIT was working on time locks puzzles and time related crypto. In 1996, Warriors, 1996, as we headed into the dot com boom, okay, the dot com bubble and boom, they were already creating cryptocurrency in 1996, but you've been told it's a fraud. Okay, so the Lehman Brothers collapsed. How on earth did our government or our banking system allow people to get loans in 2006 to 2008, the crash, right? How did the government allow people with no stated income to get loans? How did the banking system allow that to happen? How could you get a home loan, if you're not old enough to remember, how could you get a home loan Interest only. People were buying million dollar homes and paying $2,000 a month for a million dollar home because they were paying interest only. Think about that. Who let that happen? They knew this was coming, Warriors. They knew this was coming since 1971 when we attached from the gold standard. They've been setting us up for this moment in time, Warriors. You need to understand who Klaus Schwab is and who he's connected to. It will help you understand that this is a 50 year anniversary of what's happening. This has been methodically planned out, Warriors, and you're saving your pennies and you're saving your money in a deflationary asset. Or it's not even an asset, it's deflating. It has nothing attached to it, right? So now here we are in 2020, Warriors. We're in 2020. You are, oh, so in the shadow banking system collapsed in September 2019. You didn't know that, but the shadow banking system collapsed. Interesting enough, we go into a pandemic in 2020. They are pr they have printed more money. This doesn't even go into 2019. The longest U.S. expansion ongoing since 2009. That's money printing, money printing. In 2020, they have printed more money than in history, Warriors. So you think they're not crashing the car? They have printed more money in history right now, Warriors, and we kept interest rates low. Jerome Powell announced last week they're keeping interest rates low as they're helicoptering money, printing money, saving the banks. The feds are pumping the stock market. The stock market's at an all-time high in the worst economic economic times in the world and they're going to give you another $600 stimulus check like here you go Bobby or Susie here you go here's your stimulus check just keep looking over this way at a pandemic as we're going to move all our assets into stores of value and we're going to change the whole way you do finances we're going to change the whole way you do finance and it's called the great reset they're not hiding it warriors look at the world economic forum the IMF the green deal they are not hiding it it is called the great reset warriors they are calling it the Great Reset. They are not hiding it from you. Stop believing your neighbor who's watching CNN. Stop believing your banker who keeps telling you that, oh, cryptocurrency is a fraud, when their very own bank has their own cryptocurrency platform. Chase, JP Morgan, look up JPM coin. Chase, bank's the number one cryptocurrency platform in the world, Coinbase. Coinbase just announced they're IPOing. They're going on the international, they're going on the stock market. Cryptocurrency is not a fraud, Warriors. So this is what's happening to your savings. So there's these uh, you know, influencers out there saying, save your money, save your money, save your put, put your money. Your cash reserves are going to be gone, Warriors. 
When we get locked down and the whole economy collapses, your cash reserves are going to be gone in a second. Because what's happening is the cash that you're saving, your milk is getting more expensive. Your groceries are getting more expensive. The bottled water you're buying is getting more expensive. You're not noticing it, Warriors. It's slowly, methodically happening. And so what's happening is people, the richest people in the world, are moving into Bitcoin Warriors. Bitcoin is at almost $23,000 right now for one coin. Cryptocurrency was being created in 1996. Bitcoin came out in 2009. Ironically, ironically, right after the biggest housing market crash in history, ironically, Warriors, we don't know who uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is. We don't know who he is. With all the technology we have, all the infrastructure of the CIA and stuff, we don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is, Warriors. They created these banking rails wars. Here, let me pause for just a moment. We operate on an old archaic banking system called the SWIFT system. Just that fact, you can't move in to the new quantum realm, the new energy realm, the new uh, digital age with the banking system. You can't. You have to switch it, warriors. Banks are already operating on a blockchain war. They are already operating on a blockchain. They just don't want you to know about it because once they hit the reset button, you're going to be scrambling to survive and the richest people in the world are going to stay very, very wealthy. And they're painting it in this thing where they're trying to close the, the uh, wealth gap, which is going to widen the wealth gap. It's how it works in history, Warriors. It's time to wake up. But you can be part of the biggest shift in generational wealth. So Bitcoin, with the history of uh, its uh, vitarious ascends, uh, excuse me, and steep drops, so Bitcoin is very volatile. It's a new asset. It's close to taking out its record peak of 20000 Before this was written, it was before 20000 It is at $23,000 as I'm speaking to you right now. It's climbed 160% this year. Its gains November alone were 30%. What hedge against inflation? Does gold do that? Does silver do that? No. But that's what the richest people in the world are doing. They're moving into gold, silver, cryptocurrency. And there's never been a time like this in history, Warriors, where you... As an institutional investor or a, a normal person like me can invest in the biggest shift in generational wealth, you, there's going to be more millionaires and billionaires created within the next year with cryptocurrency warriors. That could be you. You don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to become rich in cryptocurrency. It went up 160% this year, warriors. It went up 160% this year. I have Bitcoin warriors. Imagine what happened to my portfolio. I was buying it at 9000 I missed the, the one where you could buy it for pennies on the dollar. I bought it for 9000 It went to 23000 Warriors. Think about that gain. Think about that gain, Warriors. That is astronomical. Okay. Now, here's the story of Bitcoin's 2000 rise from the charts. Look at this. Look at this. This is 2020, Warriors, and we're just getting started. The bull run is just, it was a baby calf run. It was not a bull run, Warriors. You are heading into the biggest bull run in history in 2021, and you can get involved, Warriors. So this is where the big money is moving to. So as centralized banks and governments unleash the money printing presses and spending taps to combat the damage, C-word, plentiful liquidity has lifted assets from emerging currencies and junk bonds into bitcoins and stocks. Whereas people are moving into energy, gas, Airbnb just went public, Coinbase just announced they're going public, one of the top cryptocurrency platforms in the world, Chase, Banks, Coinbase Warriors, it is not a fraud. You've been sold a narrative, Warriors. Stop believing. Your cash is trash, as Ray Dalio says. It's time to move your hard-earned money. I don't care if you work at McDonald's. I'm happy you have a job. Good job. You're working hard. Take some of your paycheck and invest it in assets. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm telling you exactly what I'm doing, Warriors. I show my Warriors my exact portfolio. I am 100% in cryptocurrency. You may call that ignorant. I 100% believe in it because I used to be an executive banker and I understand the banking system and I understand the quantum financial system. So... Look at, your, look at your cash that you're saving in your pretty little bank account. Look what the billionaires are doing. They're moving their money into stores of value. So I'm going to leave you with this video. Please go like and subscribe. I'll attach this below. This guy comes up with some great videos. It's the informed few, okay? We're going to watch this video to end this, Warriors. But before we watch this video, I want to share with you what I can offer you. 
So we have a free Facebook group down below. You can join the free Facebook group. We go live every single day. But also, I have a Warrior Academy Warriors where I show my own portfolio. You can look at my own portfolio. I teach you subconscious mind programming around wealth. We teach you economics, the stuff that I'm telling you here right now. Also, I show my exact portfolio and every time it changes in the quantum financial system. I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. We have a cryptocurrency call every Thursday where we go over technical analysis and we teach you the baseline of how to get involved in the biggest shift in generational wealth. So if you want to join that, it's, it's a monthly fee. Cancel at any time, 100% money back guarantee. That's how confident I'm trying to help as many warriors as they can wake up to this new new quantum financial system so you can protect your family. So let's watch this short video, watch all the way through, and you know what I always say, warriors, rise, let's go. You, is you, you can't jump into cash. Cash is trash, okay? <laughs> cash is that they're going to, because they're going to print money, that we could, what do you do? You get out, okay? So cash is not going to so be what do you do so what you have to do is you have to have a well diversified portfolio and, and first of all you you have to be global and you have to have balance and i think uh, like it, it you know i don't want to grab well the headlines going to be again anyway um is i think that you have to have a certain amount of gold in your portfolio right. or you have to have something that's hard there are three monetary systems that happen or something that's hard that's key cryptocurrencies those are so crypto they say bitcoin is the new gold first is in, in the old days it had intrinsic value you'd carry around gold coins then they and then we come up with the idea of banks or even central banks and what they do is they create certificates right. we call notes that are claims on those banks and we put many more certificates than there is money in the bank and then that's a linked system right. And we, so we did that, and we broke that in 1971. Then you have a, mon um, a, a fiat monetary mm -hmm. system, which means that you can print whatever amount of money you want, and you can put that, in, and that's what governments do. So we're in that part of the cycle, bigger picture. There is also new technologies that are coming out. That's There's inventiveness. And and innovation. Right. Innovation comes from good thinking. The capacity to supplement our using artificial intelligence. The, uh, we talked about. So I think this, right? we can make the the pie bigger. The issue is how you divide the pie, and also how monetization is a threat. So there are good things here. I mean, basically, almost if you oversimplify a portfolio, you probably want the dis, the stock in the technology disrupting companies right. and some gold. <laughs> I mean, right. to over. Because it's the new technology. So think about that. Stock in companies that are disrupting technology wars. You can invest in the infrastructure. XRP is going to be the bridge currency for central banks. That is my opinion. I'm a heavy XRP investor. You got B chain, which is going to be supply chain management wars. Cryptocurrency is the future blockchain rails of the way you'll do finances. Technology revolution in relationship also to the monetization question, I think. I believe that when you look at bonds um, um, and debt, um, a bond is a promise to, to, to receive currency. So you have, um, when you're holding a bond, that gives you no interest rate or a negative interest rate. And they're producing a lot of currency. Um, and you're going to receive that. Why would you hold that bond? Okay. And, and and where is that bond? And who owns that bond? Okay. So this period, like the 1930 to 45 period, is a period in which I think you'd be pretty crazy to own bonds. Okay. Because what is a debt? A debt in a fiat currency is a promise to receive currency. And isn't it pretty clear they're going to make a lot of currency? So I think that that changes the appeal uh, of bonds. Why, why in the world would you hold the bonds? And that has a big effect. So when you start to think about how much wealth is in bonds and where is that wealth going to go and how's that going to work and how are they going to control it? You know, I have real thoughts about that. So what is a good storehold of wealth when we're all holding all of these debt assets and how will that play out? That'll be an important consideration. Another, uh, and, and that has to do with storehold of wealth. 
And so when I think of storehold of wealth, I think what are the stable storehold of wealth in the form of uh, stocks and other kinds of debt? Um, I, I want uh, those that have strong balance sheets, stable incomes, um, and, and so on, so that you're basically having um, those assets that will perform well in any kind of an environment, and I'll look at them what, based on how cheap or expensive they are. Well, cash is always a bad investment. Uh, you know, I mean, when people said cash is king a year ago, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, cash wasn't producing anything, and it was sure to go down in value over time. I and mean, then you always want to be sure you have enough. I mean, it's like oxygen. You want to be sure it's around, you know, but you don't need to have, you don't need to have excessive amounts of it around. And cash, uh, we will always have enough cash yeah. around. But any time we have surplus cash around, I'm unhappy. I mean, I would much rather have good businesses than cash. And, and uh, we found a chance in the last year thereabouts to deploy. We, we came in with something over forty billion in cash, right. and we've got about twenty billion now, and we've had some earnings. So we we put a lot of cash to work, and I like that. No, I'd much rather own a good business uh, than have cash. Uh, and it is a hedge against the dollar. Well, you can say all assets are a hedge against okay. the, the dollar. I mean, but. All you know is that the dollar is going to be worth less 10, 20, 30 years from now. I say worth less, not right. worthless. Right. <laughs> you want to watch that. <laughs> but it, it will be, you know, and that's, that's true of almost every currency that I can think of. Uh, the question is how much uh, it depreciates in value. But cash cash is not a place to uh, that. Why that is that? Mind. Well, the, because the dollar it, is going to be worth less. Because we'll, we'll, we'll print more of them in relation to the amount of goods that are moving uh, you know, if we if we dropped if we dropped a million dollars of cash into every household in the United States today, everybody feel very good, except the people that invest in things that were denominated in dollars. And, you know, <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there will be no tendency uh, toward deflation in, in, in this country over time, or or virtually any a tendency toward inflation. Absolutely. All right, warriors. So think about that. Think about what he said. Take your cash and invest in companies. So you don't have a bunch of capital to start a company. That's what investing in a cryptocurrency is. You're investing in an actual company. When you buy a stock on the stock market, you are buying part of the company. If you work for somebody and you collect a paycheck, you will never be rich unless you take that money earned and turn it into an asset. You can be a company owner by buying cryptocurrencies, by buying stocks in companies. Airbnb went public last week. You're buying a share in that company. You're an owner of the company. Warriors, the biggest shift in generational wealth is happening right now, and your cash is trash. Take that cash and turn it in. Pay yourself first, Warriors. That's what the government's doing. Pay yourself first. But we teach you how to do that in our Warrior Academy. You can also join our free Facebook group down below. Click the link down below to join the Warrior Academy today. You'll have access to my portfolio right when you get in there, Warriors. I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. I'm asking you to learn how to fish, Warriors. Don't believe a word I say. Question everything, but what you can't do is sit back as the biggest shift in generational wealth happens right now. Warriors, rise. Everything's down in the description below. Let's go.